All right, here's his tuple. His tuple has a lot to talk about. Uh, it's very interesting. We just did is union, and is tuple is kind of like the inverse of that, or uses some of the same skills. So we're going to implement a type called is tuple. Let's just look at the challenges. Okay, it's easier to see in the challenges. So if we pass in an empty array, we get true. Uh, is is tuple? Uh, some people say tuple, tuple. I don't know. I go back and forth. Duple. It says we say duple, triple, tuple. I don't know. If you pass in something that's just inside here, uh, then we also say true. That's fine. Read only is good. Um, this is uh, trying to fake it. It's trying to pretend. It's kind of masquerading as a uh, as a as an array. Arrays are objects. Objects have properties, and one of the properties arrays have is length. So that's what this one's trying to test for. This is not a tuple. This is a number array. Never is the empty set. Uh, so we always want to check for that. And I added this case. We don't have to pass this one, but there are tests. There are ways to do this that pass this one. And uh, yeah. I would I would normally say where would you start with this, but I'm not even going to let you start because well, no, this is. I think this is pretty approachable. You think um, so? Okay, yeah, I have I like a whole bunch of things I wanted to show first, but you try and let's let's see okay. if you can do it. Let's I'm going to be see what I what I do. Okay, so please. Um, yeah, of course we want to use length. We're we're going to have to deal with. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to say just straight off the bat we can check uh, t extends unknown for free um, unknown array uh, if it does we probably need to do I'll say true for now mm -hmm. uh, and then otherwise false okay so this is going to pass some amount of the cases so we need to now check more for true now we can say t of length uh, number extends t of length. So ah, okay. Yep, that's a trick. Sort of uh, mm -hmm. reverse of what we think. And this is just like a finite check. So if number does extend t of length, that means it's arbitrarily long, so it's not what we want. Uh, then we can do true. So Very close. This, and then read only is like read like constant, constant uh, Dorn and folks side. And then finally, uh, we can do the uh, is never check. It's usually usually people do is never check in the beginning, so I'll go ahead and add that in the beginning. Uh, so that's kind is of never you. is uh, yes t extends never. Um, if it uh, does, then it's going to be false. There we go. Otherwise, I, I, I finished it for you. Okay, cool. And I think that's that's everything. You are a boss, my friend. Uh, yes, <laughs> you did it, um, and you made it look easy. Can I just say to anybody watching, you have been you have been tricked. This is not easy, um, but you understand a lot of like this. For example, number extends t length. Uh, okay, so yeah. let me back up, and I'm going to show a couple of things that I pre prepared. I usually don't do that for do this for challenges, but this one has a lot to talk about. So here's one of the first things I pre prepared. When you do number extends t length, see it's like it's like foreshadowing. You like read my mind, and then here we are. Yeah. Uh, so when you do number extends t length, when an array is passed in, an array's length is number, but a tuple's length is a specific number literal. Yep. So so let's look at some examples of like how this like I want to really spell it out like what exactly happens. So if we say a number specific number extends some specific number, true or false, we get true. If we say number extends number, we also get true. Okay, that should be very easy to make understand so far. But is number, I, I heard someone say once that instead of extends, you should ask yourself, is assignable to? So let's rephrase it. Yes. Is number assignable to one? If you think about it, the answer should be no. Because number is a wider type than one. One is very refined. So the reverse is true. One yeah. is assignable to number. Yeah, that's true. One is a member of the set number. But number is not a member of the set one. It's the I opposite. I would like, love to pontificate a little bit on how I think of extends. Please, extends yeah. As is a subtype of. So is one a subtype of number? Mm, yeah, yeah, that's great. I like that because too. It's a more narrow type. Uh, and you can think of number as just an infinitely large union type of like zero or one or negative one or two or negative two or 2.3, right? So yeah. if you just think about it in unions and subtypes, I think it becomes a little that's bit That's great. More yeah, I like that. That's that's also a great way to phrase it. Okay. Uh, then I have a new another concept. This looks this, I'll explain more why in a second. This is uh, <laughs> is any. Uh, I don't think there's a challenge for is any. There should be though. So basically we're saying does one, which is a specific number like we have up here, extend t intersected with zero. 
This can only be true in the case of any being passed in. So I did this out. A here is equal is equal to any. Any and anything else is you know union with anything else. Well, any is the set of all things, right? So any and anything else will just kind of pare down to any. Never is an empty set. So never intersected with some other thing, any other thing is always going to be nothing because there's nothing left because you intersected nothing with something. It's like dividing by zero. Unknown is kind of the other way of looking at things. Um, if you don't, unknown is and intersected with zero, well, we're going to get back zero because unknown doesn't have anything in it. It's not the empty set. It's unknown. I may not be explaining this well, but this is the reason if you stare at these three examples and then you come back up here to line 45, it should helpfully, hopefully make more sense why when you put something and zero in here, the only thing that can come out, the only thing that can pass is any. Yeah, I think that uh, things like this is, makes the like algebraic structure of TypeScript very clear. Makes me wish I was a mathematician. Because yeah, seriously. It, it's like, one, it's it makes me think of like the multiplicative identity law that you learned in mm -hmm. elementary school, right? Yeah. There's different laws. We don't really have names for them, but maybe we should. Uh, yeah. Laws where like any type. No, isn't that what the fantasy um, land spec thing is? You mentioned Haskell earlier, so I, I feel like I can say those words to you. Yeah, uh, fantasy land is monads, all that functional stuff. Um, Maybe, uh, you know, it's, it, it gets, it gets out there. It so this is, arbitrarily this stuff here is straight out of the is never solution. Um, you can go watch that video to see more talk about never and is never, but basically any combination of the things that you see here, uh, will work as a never check. Usually you see people do this one and we've been doing this one. So, okay. I, I did that. We have is never. Okay. Let's go to a fairly clean implementation. So we're saying is true a subtype of, see, I'm using your thing. It's true, a subtype of the union of is any and is never. So we're basically doing a all in one gulp. We're saying we're checking whether or not this is true, or whether or not this is any and whether or not this is never. If it's either of those things, we'll fall into this false case here. Um, well, actually, it's the true branch of the condition, but the value that it re resolves to is false. Okay, so let's keep going. It's not net any and it's not never. Great. Then we're going to say, does T extend? And we have a union here. This first one is a uh, empty tuple. And this one here is a tuple with values. If it's a tuple with values, we don't care about what those values are, but we do need to infer them. Then we'll return true because we know that it's a tuple now. Otherwise, for all other cases, we return false, which this part will catch every mm -hmm. other kind of thing, booleans and numbers and every other thing you can imagine because they don't extend the union of these things. Mm -hmm. I would like to maybe, if you don't mind, try to uh, optimize the solution a bit because I see things Please. in the solution that are not needed. So okay. there's a there's like simplifying laws that you can you can uh, get with practice. Let's do if it. you ever have infer something that doesn't have a constraint on it and you're not using it anywhere, you can replace it with unknown. Yeah. And then if you ever have a destructure, you can replace it with uh, unknown tuple, like unknown brackets. So immediately we're kind of simplifying the structure, arguably. Mm -hmm. And then I believe that... Um, and this still passes all the tests. This still passes all the tests. And I believe that just read only uh, unknown array may also pass... All, all the of them, but no, number array. The okay. Yeah. So that goes a little bit too far, but at the very least we can do this to... Mm -hmm sort of like simplify the structure. I love it. Yeah. We, uh, in a lot of the challenges we do, a, I didn't catch that. Uh, in a lot of the challenges we do a decently good job. I haven't seen this trick before that you can just uh, do spread of unknown array. That's, that's a clever one. Um, I like that. This is another uh, solution. Let's see. Did, oh, we have a couple here. Okay. Did I paste too many at once? Oh, I pasted three at once. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, we'll go from the bottom. So this is another one. We're doing the never check. We've seen that before. We're doing the uh, read-only unknown array. So uh, like something with values. And we're saying, does number extend T length? Now, T length is going to be, well, just like we showed up here, in the case of, uh, in the case of a, an array, T length is number. But in the case of a tuple, it's a specific number. Right, And then we see here, number extends specific number is false, which is the case we fall into here. And then we say false. Yep. This I like the solution a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Th this one is like, is terse, but readable. Um, 
it's like it's like a little of both. Uh, this is very close. I think it just use uh, you can use any here. I always advocate for not using any if at ever possible. There's only like one or two cases with like function arguments where you have yeah. to use any. Yeah, anywhere you use any, you can generally use a known uh, on the type level. Um, it doesn't always, uh, it is always, always the case, but defaulting to unknown instead of any is like a good heuristic. For sure. And I made your little optimization here. Uh, this one is doing sort of similar thing. It's doing the empty tuple check in a different branch. Uh, that's that's kind of fun. Uh, and I think it helps to write things out more, obviously, like that. No. This one, let me Wait. copy the... Yeah, when I see when I see uh, things that are like just a sequence of checks, it really makes me wish we had native higher kind of types, so that we could like yeah. do like an all we can make it more functional, like elide the structure and make the structure a little bit more obvious when we're like checking mm -hmm. the truth of multiple statements. Yeah, I hear you. Um, Sweet. So then, then there's this one here. This do does not work, excuse me, uh, and it doesn't work because it doesn't pass the case with never. But we can try to look at it and see why. It doesn't do the never check. Um, so that's like a big difference. But it's fundamentally, we can replace this with unknown. It's fundamentally very similar to the other ones that we saw. We basically just need to add, like, let me see if I can, like, paste it in here. Okay, the formatting's all messed up, but it's like, just like this part is the is the is never check. Um, so yeah, important to do that is never check. Okay, the, a lot of people I saw online failed to get that part quite right. It could be because this test wasn't added at a particular time. It is the last one. I added this case for any just to make it harder and funner. But um, yeah, super, super fun one. This discu discussion of this stuff is is really worthwhile. And I think it's, you can benefit from understanding, like sitting down and understanding what's just on the screen right now. Um, really cool stuff. So awesome. Thanks for uh, any other final thoughts before we go on. No, uh, great. This is a very useful type, I would say. And uh, yeah, I think we explained it well. Awesome.